Hey, what's up? So let's now continue looking at the Redux Toolkit uh, package. So after generating the app using the Create React application uh, with the Redux template, it will generate this simple structure. This is the normal one, but you will notice something different that they already installed this for us. If you are adding the toolkit to already existing application, you will just install it by yourself and uh, you will configure the store using this package. And even if you have like multiple um, or you have some part of your application that uses the toolkit and some part that uses only React Redux and this is totally fine, it won't break anything. This is the, or at least one of the best parts about it. It won't break already existing code. So you can easily integrate it. I have done this, it's totally fine. So let's go to our source. You will see new different, new things, or sorry, two new things that you usually don't see when you generate an application using create react app we have the app folder here we have only our uh, store so as you can see we're importing the counter reducer this one is responsible for these as you can see when we increment and decrement so we're importing that and assign it to the reducer key with the value with the, with another key called counter and that's will point to the counter reducer so this is why actually if you go to our state you will see this key if you change this this will be changed as well so this wouldn't be counter this will be anything you put here yeah so it's just a quick note uh, i think that will be useful and this will be actually imported i believe in our index as you can see they will import the store from app to the store from the app then for the stash store of course and use the provider from react redux normal stuff uh, it's really basic and the cool thing about this function that as you can see we are importing from the from the package the toolkit package uh, it will by default integrate the redux dev tool with the with our store which is very nice and it have a lot of uh, cool stuff and you can actually override this by your own logic depending on your environment and stuff like that uh, very powerful very uh, very good and simplifies so many things and i think this also comes with uh, or integrate as well redux thanks so you can create uh, synchronous actions by uh, out of the box so you don't need to configure anything more and we will come to that so and the new thing you will notice that we have a features folder and this is actually just a folder with another folder called counter let me create another one so you can see so called you this this doesn't matter but we have this folder called features and inside of it we have counter counter is a feature in our application this is this counter and this is the way that i think they want us to think while developing with our toolkit um, you can actually just do whatever you want this is this has only uh, a purpose or the whole purpose of this to simplify dealing with redux and react it's not it has nothing to do with how you should organize your uh, folder structure or how, how you should split your code but in the generated application they split the code by feature and i like this so if i have counter feature all the SAS, all the images, all the stat static content, all the JavaScript, all the components, or even that um, the stored logic will be inside this folder. Uh, I like doing this. I came from uh, an Angular background, and in Angular we do this. Each component will have everything it's need in the same folder. The SAS, the tests, the, the template HTML, the TypeScript code, everything is there. So yeah, that's a really co cool thing. Uh, I hope I see more people do this. So this is the counter uh, component, obviously by the capital C. This is how we usually name for, uh, files that are components in uh, React. I will, I, will came, I will come to this after discussing the store. This is the, CS, the CSS. And this is the, or this is everything regarding the counter state um, and Redux. This is everything. What just one line let me move the comments and you will see how small this is so no actions or we will come to that but we we don't see right just by looking that we have actions or action types and all of that and let me show you uh what's going on here so it's really small just 30 lines uh first thing we are importing this function called the create slice 
and we will call that and pass to it a configuration object. First property is name. This is the name of our slice. For this one, it will be counter. This uh, doesn't matter that much, but just name them unique names. Okay. The initial state. This is. I think this you will be or I think you will be familiar with this. This is the initial state. We usually do that with the function with a switch statement. We will pass to it the initial state. This is the same thing. You might define it here and define it here. Up to you. So this is the reducer. This is this is the interesting part. So we have three functions inside this object: increment, decrement, increment by amount. Increment will update the value inside the state. As you can see, this is our state. So state dot value plus one. And each function here will have a reference to the state as the first argument. The second argument is the action, which has a type and a payload. So you can destruct this. Oh, you can select these, and if you think about it, they are com they are updating the value inside the state in an in an mutable way, which is wrong. But Redux Toolkit comes with Emma, which makes these actions or these kind of updating the object uh, an immutable action. So we are fine, and this actually the syntax is really shorter. So if you think about it. I will usually do something like this, or we usually do something like this, and the value will be something like this. Uh, plus one, and this would be stead value. So this is actually this line is really simple comparing compared with this line or these lines. So yeah, remember that we are using imr so. This package, I will put a link in the description. You should read about it, but just remember you can update things normally without worrying about uh, anything almost. You can actually, even if you have an array, you can pop and unshift and or do all of that actions uh, on the array without worrying about if this if I'm doing something mutable or immutable. It will handle that for you, which is very nice. And I think if you are if you are wondering how they did that. They are using a proxy object. Object. So anything you do in the state, they will proxy it to some functions that will uh, make sure that that action is uh, immutable. Uh, it's called uh, proxy MDN API. Pretty sure that they are using this one. I will put a link in the description if you want to read about it. Very interesting stuff. Really interesting. Uh, anyway, let's just continue. So decrement will minus by one, and increment by amount. They will use the payload to increment the state. Very simple. And now this create slice will return an object with a with a couple of properties. First property is the actions. So as you can see from the actions, so we're storing the return value here. So from the actions, we are destructuring the increment, decrement, and increment by amount. And these are not the same as these. Okay, that's something to note. These are actions. Oh, sorry. These are action creators. These are the reducer functions. So different things, okay? The, but they have the same name, uh, which I like to be honest. Uh, you can change that by doing this. So increment maybe uh, action, something like that. But I will keep it the same name. So these are action creators, and we will import these in any place in our application and call them using the dispatch function and that. We'll dispatch that action and we will eventually come here and update the state. And this is something to note. If you remember, if we take a look and at our actions, this will be increment or oh, sorry, counter for slash increment, decrement, and increment by amount. These are the name of the functions, as you can see, the name of the actions. And this counter comes from here. So it will be the name of the slice for the slash, the name of the function or the name of the action creator function. That's how these will be named, uh, which is very interesting. Maybe you can do something like this. I think this will make it. Uh, yeah, it's actually more beautiful like this. But I hate this for the slash, but uh, don't think that's an issue. Anyway, so these are the actions. Uh, simple stuff. So we generate our actions dynamically based on our reducers, which is very nice. And this one here, this is the asynchronous actions. So if you want to do 
like some anything as cyclos, maybe fetching some data from an API, you will define function that looks like this. And I will show you more complex example. This is really simple. So as you can see there, they are or they have a function that accepts an amount, a number. And let me show you how they will use this. So as you can see, we have dispatching this action with a number. And this will be this. The number will be this amount. And it will return a function. And this function will be called by the Redux toolkit. And this is why we can we have an access to the dispatch because they will pass the dispatch for this function as the first argument. So we can dispatch any one of these actions. And that's it, really simple. So this is like the basic template for Cyclones actions. But I will show you how we can know or how we can dispatch action on success, on failure, on fulfilled uh, in case of HTTP requests and something like this. And uh, at the end of the file, they are exporting the reducer from the create from the counter slice. So this is actually if you go to our store inside our app, you will see that they import the they import the default export as a counter reducer and just reference it like this. I think this is really simple. I mean, no action types, no action, everything generated dynamically after defining our slice or our reducers inside our slice. Very awesome. Really, uh, really nice. Uh, something that I skipped is the select count function. This is just a simple function that accepts an object. We will call it state, then access the counter and return the value for us. And this is actually, if you think about it, the state will be this, or the state. Sorry, the state will be the global state, not this. So, yeah, the global state. And this counter comes from, if you think about it, this. So if you might actually maybe do this, so combine all reducers, or I like to specify them by key. So the count, the reducer that does does or handle the counter stuff, I will have the counter key for it and stuff like that. So state, this will be the whole Redux store inside this function, and we will access this the counter. Then we will go to the value, and I will if you search for this you will see they are using it inside our counter to js component and they pass it to this function the use selector and yeah i will come i will come to this in a moment but this is it or this is everything you need to know right now about the slices this is this is the basic like structure for any slice the only thing missing here is how we can do maybe http requests which i will show you in, a, uh, in the next videos but this is the basic structure, which is which is very small if you compare it to any uh, basic structure for any Redux story I've ever done. So, to dispatch these actions, let's go to our counter JS and see how they did that. So, as you can see, there is no connect function or map to. Yeah, there is no connect function. There is no map state to props. There is no map dispatch to props. So you can search actually for the connect. You don't see anything but how they connect to the store they use two hooks from react redux uh, the first one is use selector as you can see to get the count we use this the use selector and pass to it a function you have two ways here you either specify your own function here so state and this will be the whole state object inside the store now go to counter now go to value or write them the same place you write your slice so you can use them in multiple places maybe a specific component somewhere in our application needs the counter so why write this line of code multiple times just take it reference it here import it and put it in your selector multiple places and that's it so the logic to get your counter would be the same everywhere and it's only defined one place in one place so when you when you change that it will be changed everywhere else so it's really nice so or you can just define your function here like i just showed you and that's it yeah it's up to you but i will stick to this uh the second hook is the use dispatch this will retain a reference to the dispatch function that is responsible to uh, dispatch the action so we, we will use our action creators that have been generated dynamically here or created dynamically and we will call them and pass the return value 
to the dispatch function returned from the use dispatch and that's it uh, so as you can see this is the increment value button on a click they will dispatch the increment action creator which at the end will dispatch the uh, increment action and that will call our increment reducer and that's it this is by this is the decrement sorry this is the decrement this is the increment by amount as you can see they they have a local state here this is starts by two and they will update this on change here it doesn't matter but they will use the dispatch function coming from the hook the use dispatch and it dispatch this action increment by amount and increment async and that's basically it I hope this is not that confusing I really find it simple it's much simpler it's much cleaner uh, maybe it's confusing at the start maybe if you are not familiar with immer or immutable you might understand this but uh, it's really cool it's really simple and I will show you how we can create a to-do list application starting from the next video and I will compare it with another series that I made with another series that I made I made a while ago I think maybe before two months where I showed you how or I showed uh, the viewer about the basics of Redux and uh, how we can create a to-do list application with it I'll show you how the connect function how to connect to the store how to map the state of the store to props or map that map the dispatch actions or how to dispatch actions uh, from any store from any component um, and we will compare the result and the code amount in the two uh, approaches and see which one is less uh, I'm pretty sure this is one is this one is less but uh, yeah we will see yeah thank you